Hello everyone, it's Alex International, and yes, I'm finally back with a new video. I know it's been forever, but guys, I think you're gonna love this video. It's an action-packed two-part series where I'm gonna be explaining to you guys my huge four-foot vivarium with multiple colonies in it and what exactly happened. The first video is gonna be some footage from a few months ago, so I apologize for the bad quality, and the next part will be some more recent footage. So I really think you guys are gonna like this. Without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Hello everyone, um, and today we are doing probably one of the dumbest things we've ever done. We are taking the idea of Nordic ants and creating a multi-colony setup in this beautiful four-foot tank. I have my friend Archie here. We got a ton of soil, bonsai trees, uh, clay, and yeah. So guys, you can see that I'm currently constructing the vivarium, and the first thing that I add is some orange clay. This was originally meant to be the drainage layer, but I made a big mistake, and I'll explain to you guys why that happened and how it was a terrible decision of a drainage layer. But once the vivarium was finally complete, I think you guys can see the theme that I was trying to go for. I have a lot of exposed soil, a lot of patches of moss, and three bonsai trees at the center. If you haven't guessed, the theme was meant to be a sort of forest floor. Um, a lot of the ants that I'll be adding into here are used to the forest floor, and the bonsai trees are actually for another arboreal ant species that I will be adding into here. But I'm not this. I'm just gonna say this vivarium changes a lot, guys. And the first colony that I'm gonna be adding into here is a small chromatogaster colony, about 100 workers. Now the cool thing about this colony is that they are an arboreal species, meaning that if I'm right, they should take to the trees and make a nice little nest up there, which I think is going to be something pretty cool to look at, guys. So let's just see what happens. Alright, so day one is passed, and I'm going to be adding in the second colony now, which is a colony of Campanonis maculonis. This is a small colony of about 40 workers housed in a tubs and tube setup and their test tubes are looking a bit moldy as you guys can see so I basically just took out the test tube since the whole colony was in there and placed it directly into the tank. I placed it on the right side because they are a small colony and I'm going to be adding in one more colony which I want to stay in the left side of the tank. I have a rock position there and I think they should be digging under there as these a lot of Campanotus ants here like to nest under driftwood or rocks or whatever. As soon as I added them in and exposed them to the light, they instantly started moving just as I had expected. They're quite an active colony and were definitely being quite aggressive when they were moving out, so I'll just have to see where they move and hopefully my plan goes to plan. I'm just going to give you an update on the vivarium because a lot has gone down and I'm really scared about what's happening. So basically, I added my Campanotus maculatus colony, small colony, about 40 workers, but they're giant, in about this corner here, in this kind of rocky terrain area, which I designed. And then I kind of made this valley of this uphill part to kind of discourage them to move out, but they were rebellious and they were like, you know what, screw that, we're just gonna forage around. And at that time, I actually added the chromatogasters, but they're um, test tubes gone and they actually did something seriously cool which I'll show you guys at the end but they basically were like screw you James I'm gonna go into the spot that you wanted to put the Campanotus or Ventress which are gonna go under this giant log and they're like screw you they went all around here moved into this log and now they are in this log area and actually you can see a lot of them it's really cool they've dug into the driftwood which is seriously awesome so guys, the cool thing that I wanted to show you is guess what happened? Yes, the chromatogasters moved into the tree after a few days. It's so cool. You can see they're really exposed right now. I'm guessing they're trying to dig into the bonsai tree, but you can see they have all their brood on this little stump here, and the rest of the colony is kind of nudged into this little crack. You can see some new workers actually appearing, and it's quite difficult to feed these guys. I mean, they're growing quite well. And over there, you can see the queen. Sorry for the terrible quality again. But yeah, I mean, they're very exposed, so I hope they do well, and we'll see how they do in the future. So now it's finally time to add in the final colony. It's been about a week now, and both colonies are well established in the material. The bonsai tree has lost a lot of leaves, and I think it's time we add the new colony. 
And if you haven't guessed it yet, it's the Campanata Spore Adventures colony that I got. They're a really nice colony and they're not too large and I thought it'd be nice to add them because they need some more space and I feel this vivarium would be quite good for them. Now, what you're seeing me doing right now is a bit weird. I'm adding some ice blocks in right now to kind of discourage them to move out of this area because I don't want these two ants coming to the log and having a war over it after the smaller Campanos maculatus colony moved into the large log. So that was a bit annoying, but I feel that these ants should be fine in this area. I hope my ice strategy works. So right now you can just see me unplugging the outworld and basically what I just did was added the entire nest inside and let them move in on their own schedule. It was taking them a while to move and they didn't seem very optimistic about moving out so I decided to lift the glass panel and just let them out. Um, everything went to plan and I added the rest of the ants out of the outworld and they started scouting around and sadly my ice block strategy did not work but the ants seemed to want to stay in this area and that was good enough for me so we'll just see how things go. So it's now week two and a lot has happened. The ants are now well established in this new territory and I must say the Campanatus Oroventris are on the offensive. And in this two week time period, I actually managed to catch the ants first contact. I was just casually watering the area. I actually have this interesting strategy of where I pour water directly into the clay, which disperses the water out uh, through the entire nest. And this instead of pouring it over the dirt, because what happened was the dirt kind of, it was a weird effect where the dirt would sit on the surface of the water and kind of roll down. But now I noticed it. An ore ventures worker was wandering very close to the Campanales Macularis entrance. And then they touched each other. And the Campanales ore ventures worker just ran away really quickly. There was no locking of mandibles. So I assume this was a good thing. And as you guys can see, the Campanales or Ventures dug into the clay, so that was my problem. If I added too much water, it would flood their nest, which would not be very good. So, I mean, for now, we're okay. But now one month has passed. The, the Chromatogasters are doing all right. It seems they've gotten more workers into the tree and the Campanales or Ventures are doing quite well. But at about the one month time period, something very bad happened and it's quite sad so I woke up uh, one day and I came to the site of all the ants of the Campanales Maculatus colony out running around and I was so confused because I'd never seen something like this before they were usually quite quiet and timid after I added in the new ant colony and then I saw it the queen was out wandering around and she did not look well what was happening she was spazzing around, she kept falling on her back and wasn't moving correctly. I was freaking out, I quickly rushed to my ant supplies and got a test tube. I didn't know what was happening with her, but all I know is that something wasn't right. Could have been ant, Campanos or Ventress come in there and try to attack her. I didn't see any of the other ants fighting any other ants, so I didn't assume that this was the case. I thought it could be something else. And the sad thing is, is that I've seen this happen before with this species. I was freaking out because I know what was going to happen. The queen was going to die and the rest of the colony would not have a queen. As you can see her right here, she's wasting a lot of energy and she's not calm at all. I was trying to calm her down and I didn't know what the problem was. I started having a closer look and these queens are very large and then I noticed that one of her legs seemed to have been broken. Since these queens are so large, maybe they are not the best at moving, and she must have fallen or something like that, and maybe broken her leg, which caused her to freak out. I decided to leave her alone and let her recover. I came back about 10 minutes later to see her still spazzing on her back. I knew if this continued, she would surely die. I didn't know what the best course of action was, so I just decided to add her back into the nest, hoping that the workers could try to calm her down. It was really sad to see this because this has happened before with not one but two of my other Campanolis Maculatus colonies, where the queen has just mysteriously died out and left the whole colony by itself, and they all just died out. It is quite sad, guys, and to witness this was very emotional for me. 
Eventually, I, I just saw the workers had given up on the queen, and she was still spazzing out. I decided to give them some honey to try to calm them down, but this colony that you guys see right here died because of the same reason. The queen was spazzing out, and she passed away. I think this is addresses a couple issues for me, guys, and I think this is a valuable lesson for hand keeping. Nothing really goes to plan, and you will make a lot of mistakes through your journey as an ant keeper. But the important thing is, is to learn from those mistakes and continue. Well, that was a bit of a sad ending, guys, and I'm very sorry that I'm going to have to cut it here. It was really sad to see this colony go. I love them so much, and it was very emotional. Sorry, I don't like to get all sad and depressed like this, guys, but I just felt that it was such a bad, sad experience. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. But the action still continues when I decide to add a very old, actually my first ant colony, into this huge vivarium. They needed some space, and when I added them, a lot happened. There was a lot of fighting, a lot of war for space, and I can't wait to show you guys that in the part two of this series. A lot of cool stuff is going to happen, guys, and I can't wait to get back in to updating you guys on my ant keeping experiences. Anyway, I'd like to thank everybody for watching this video. Thank you guys all so much for supporting me and staying on this channel. I hope you guys can forgive me for not uploading for so long. And guys, I have not been responding to a lot of questions, so make sure you throw some comments and questions down there So if you want me to read them, because I haven't been checking my YouTube series and like my questions and comments and everything like that. So if you want to leave me a message, I read everyone's comments, so just leave them down below. And hey, if you guys like the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next part of this Vivarium series. See ya!